Hi, it's Lerald, and in this video, I'm just going to talk about my thoughts on all 12 of the tank hero talent specs that I have been playing over the last week, week and a half of the expansion being out. And I did also test them all throughout the alpha and beta, and I'm obviously carrying all that information from that time into this as well. But I specifically want this to be about my thoughts on them over the last, like I said, week, nine days, whatever it is, of playing them in normal and heroic dungeons. I can extrapolate out a mythic plus and raids, of course, a lot of this is going to carry over. It's also just my opinion. That's the whole point of a tier list or a ranking or whatever. It's just to talk about stuff and have a framework for it. And that is what this is. But you are allowed to disagree with me. You can do that. <laughs> you can be wrong. So in terms of ranking and evaluating each spec, here's the criteria I'm using. Is it fun? Is it strong? Does it make sense? Does it change your playstyle at all, either good or bad? And how does it compare to the alternative for that class? So let's go ahead and get into it, but first don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, the algorithm's been appeased. Let's rank some tanks. So let's just go ahead and start with DK since it is alphabetical and I have the Deathbringer and Sand Lane icons here. And I'll go ahead and start with Deathbringer again, alphabetical. Is it fun? Absolutely. Is it strong? Yes, it might be the strongest hero spec in the in the game. It certainly is on the list. Does it make sense thematically? I mean, I think so. In so much as uh, either of these two do, I think it actually winds up being the one that I like a lot more conceptually than just kind of being a blood guy. I think the uh, slashing with a big weapon and kind of having some combos is cool. And it really does change your play style as well. It gives you this big 30 or 45 second cooldown, depending on what uh, talent you're going with in this choice node down in the bottom left here. Swift end, 30 second cooldown, bit cheaper, but 45 second cooldown out of Painful Death. Ultimately playing around with them more now, I really have come to like Painful Death. I think the ability to combo Reaper's marks into each other over and over again is immensely satisfying. So just a really, really fun play style to have kind of these combos that can potentially roll and have this like massive damage increase is really, really fun. And I think compared to the alternative, it is a massive upgrade. I, I think playing with Sand Lane has really... Sand Lane was insanely strong early on in the in the beta, early on in the alpha even, uh, and then it kind of got nerfed some and then nerfed a bit more. And ultimately, that has really exposed what this is, which is this kind of maintenance buff that you're desperately trying to maintain. It's a bit like playing a Frost Mage, uh, sort of some of the like worst days of playing a Frost Mage where you're trying to maintain a buff between pulls. And that is exactly how Sand Lane feels. I think it's probably the least fun of all of the hero specs of all of the tanks. I would say that trying to maintain that buff between pulls that are dying super fast, it's basically impossible. So I would put it as low as as low as the tier list goes. I'm gonna put it at D. It's not non-functional. It doesn't like ruin the class to play it, but it really is uh, a tale of two extremes. Maybe the most fun, maybe the most strong, like certainly in the list of strongest, most fun hero specs available. And then also on the list of the absolute worst to the worst. Ultimately, I think DK is really good. Like, I'm really uh, having a great time playing it so far. More so than I expected, considering that it's, like, doing heroic dungeons. You know, that's not... Speedy dungeons is not usually where you expect DK to be great, but it really has been. Now, moving on to Demon Hunter, we have Aldrachi Reaver and Felsguard. Again, I'll drag those both in here. And Aldrachi Reaver, I think, is a little bit better than I expected. Just dabbling with it a little bit and, like... I think just outdoor content even, I was not super thrilled, but I had very low expectations, like in terms of it being fun, not really, it's sort of a combo class, and the combo is really about just maximizing your single target damage, you have this very long single target damage bonus, this like debuff that you apply to enemies, it gives you a bunch of extra damage in single target, and you have really good uptime on it, but in, in any sort of AoE situation, or when monsters are dying super quickly, that doesn't mean anything. And so that kind of undercuts the strength of it. And then I guess you could say it does make sense thematically, but kind of in a master of the blade way, it's a little bit lame to me. It definitely changes your play style. I think that the comboing play style could be pretty fun in raids, but for dungeons, I really have not been dungeons, outdoor content, stuff that's moving very quickly. I have not been impressed by Eldrashi Reaver at all. Bellsguard, on the other hand, completely surprised me. Like, I really thought it was going to be another boring spec as well, but I think that it has really jumped out and been a lot more fun than I had expected, and I think a lot of that really comes down to this talent right here in the middle, Violent Transformation. This ability to activate Metamorphosis and get Sigil of Flame and Fell Devastation to reset, and then all of that being combined with kind of the base skill and the, the ultimate talent 
giving your fell dev immolation or a sigil of flame and then also soul cleave and spirit bomb giving like all five of those skills a big extra burst of damage and then being able to press meta and reset them just feels really really good and really strong it creates this fun comboing play style where you are basically comboing comboing a bunch of different skills getting this big burst of damage popping all of these cooldowns and then having all of your skills reset and power back up and it really just creates this a huge burst of damage that that is like kind of the opposite of Aldrashi reaver it's really good in short fights fights with lots of burst damage where you're just pulling a hundred guys together and blasting them all down. Felsgard feels amazing for that, so I've really been enjoying it a lot. All right, now I'm going to move on to Druid, and I'm going to talk about Druid of the Claw Druid and Elune's Chosen, and we'll start with Druid of the Claw Druid. I, in terms of it being fun, I think it's definitely fun to say Druid of the Claw Druid. That is a fun experience. In terms of playing it, not as much. It definitely does not feel particularly strong in most of the content that I've done outside of very narrow burst windows where it feels insanely strong and then it like completely falls off of a cliff. And in terms of making sense thematically, I think for like a single target situation where you are taking advantage of all of the shape shifting power that it provides specifically through uh, this talent in the bottom left hand side of the tree here, wild power surge, where you're building up your feline potential and then shifting in and ripping for massively increased damage. That can make sense. I think that makes sense and is like, cool. I think that could be fun to play in raid. But for dungeons, for Mythic Plus, for anything like that, doesn't really feel very fun. Now it does change your play style, as you can see, comparing the two hero talent trees, you massively have to change your hero talents up in order to be able to shift between the two setups. You have to run a very different setup. I am running Ursox Fury in this uh, Druid of the Claw Druid setup, where I would, whereas I would like not be running that at all. I also would not be running Ursox Guidance in that setup. I would be coming down and taking Lunar Beam if I were playing a Loon's Chosen. But having Ursox Guidance is vitally important as Druid of the Claw Druid because of the final talent, Claw Rampage. And this is really my big gripe with Druid of the Claw Druid is this talent right here. During Berserk, your Mangle Swipe and Thrash have a 25% chance to make your next Maul become Ravage. This is how the talent tree should have been in the first place. You should be triggering mauls turning into Ravage by pressing other skills. That is how it should work. Your auto attacks being the thing that causes maul to become Ravage, bad idea from the start. Just a failed idea from the onset in my opinion, and this is really why I just don't think I'm ever going to be a particularly big fan of Druid of the Claw Druid until it is fundamentally redesigned or there is some more controllable way of consistently triggering Ravage throughout combat. Like you can guarantee one Ravage at the start of combat by hitting Mangle if you take killing strikes, which I have done for dungeons. It's fine, but after that first Mangle after entering combat, you're just waiting for an auto attack or you're waiting for Berserk or Incarn to be up so that you can constantly trigger Maul turning into Ravage through hitting Mangle Swipe and Thrash. So I would say ultimately it does change your play style. I think it makes it worse. And I think that it just really does not compare well at all to the alternative, which I know a lot of people have really shown a lot of love to Elune's Chosen, and I do think it is fun. But I also think some of that is maybe a little bit outdated because it was insanely strong for a while on the beta, and then it got some nerfs, and it has come not back down. It certainly hasn't crashed, but it has come back down to like a reasonable level. It's definitely a lot more fun and feels a lot more, um, I don't know, good to play than Druid of the Claw Druid. It's more consistent. I feel like I have more control over everything that's happening in combat. I like the Moonbear Druid a lot more. But I don't feel like it's god tier. Like Lunar Beam, unfortunately, when you compare it to, say, Reaper's Mark for, for Deathbringer DK, Lunar Beam is still a talent that does less damage than a single Moonfire. It gives you a lot of stat buffs, that's good, but it's not actually a good skill. Even if it is on a relatively short cooldown, the baseline skill still kind of stinks. I like all of the procs, I like all of the other stuff that comes with the Loon's Chosen, I definitely like the idea of being a spell damage tank a lot, but I'm not as sold on it as I am some of basically three other hero talent specs. So I would put it at kind of the top of the A, right alongside Felsgard, where it is kind of a pleasant surprise, but not god tier in my eyes. All right, now let's move on to Monk, and we have Master of Harmony and Shadow Pan. 
And Master of Harmony is, uh, like, to kind of run through my little checklist here, fun, strong, makes sense thematically, changes your playstyle, either good or bad, yes to all of the above, and good on the last one. It is such a incredibly powerful hero talent spec. I think when I first saw it, first unveiled during the alpha or beta or whatever, I thought, oh, that seems defensive. That could be okay in raid. And then I spent a bit more time thinking about it. And I thought, you know, that might actually be good in Mythic Plus too. And then getting a chance to kind of play with it in dungeons. It is so versatile. It is so capable of adapting to shifts in pull durations and adds streaming in. And it's just very easy to make it work really, really well. It doesn't take a lot of effort to make it be as good as it can be. And then you kind of pile on the fact that you get an extra celestial brew and you get just a lot of extra damage. Being able to convert basically all of your single target damage into additional cleave getting just a lot of extra damage. I mean, the, the fundamental component of the, the spec is that you store an extra percentage of all your damage and healing done, and then you're able to just turn that into extra damage by pressing Celestial Brew, and there's not any sort of, like, limitation on that. You just wait to press Celestial Brew. You can do it defensively. You can do it whenever you feel like it offensively. It's really, really flexible, and that is what makes this such a god-tier hero spec. Like, I, I think this one, again, like Deathbringer, for kind of the exact opposite reasons, where Deathbringer creates this wonderful burst damage window that's pretty rigid, Master of Harmony is incredibly flexible, but also a massive burst damage window, immensely powerful, and then just an insane amount of defensive value as well, added through getting a second Celestial Brew charge. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in the S tier. I don't see how you could put it anywhere else. It's just too good. As for Shadow Pan, it does change your play style. I think the problem with it is that you do have to kind of watch your energy expenditure, and that is something you probably will want to track. I'm still working on weak auras for exactly how I feel like I want to handle that, but there is some incredible power built in here. Like predictive training is this sort of minor talent thrown into the middle of the tree that's just basically an always on 10% damage reduction, which is bananas. And there's a lot of really good stuff in here. 20% more keg smash and spinning crane kick damage, 15% or 35% more keg smash damage. Like these are really, really good talents. Being able to get about 20% cooldown reduction on weapons of order, which stacks very nicely with Chi Surge. There's definitely good offensive potential with Shadow Pan, but it's the exact opposite of Master of Harmony. It is not flexible. It is reliant on you tracking your energy in order to spend it at the right time, which is very arcane and sometimes just not something that you're able to control at all. And then you are also bound by RNG, even if you do all, do all of that correctly. Maybe you get the wrong Wisdom of the Wall proc and then it doesn't really matter that you played super well because instead of getting the like crit damage bonus proc, you're getting the... The flurry strikes do extra damage to nearby enemies and you're in single target. Because of that, I still think that Shadow Pan is pretty good. Like, it definitely exceeded my expectations. I kind of thought it would be a bit of a dud, and it's not, but it's definitely a step down. So I would put it right in the middle of the pack. B is exactly where I think it belongs. I'm not higher, not lower, right in the middle. There is potential for it to be insane, godly damage. You will definitely see parses of people popping off with it or pulls, clips of people popping off. But those are going to kind of be the exception more than the rule. I think the consistent end is that it's going to be all right. All right, now I'm going to move on to Paladin and I'm going to talk about the two hero specs for Paladin. And those would be Lightsmith and Templar. And... You know, in in putting this together and in, in, in like cutting out and naming all of the icons for the different tanks, uh, you know, Paladin is kind of so nondescript that I got these two backwards. I named Templar, which is this one with the hammer. I named it Lightsmith and Lightsmith, the one with the shields. I named that Templar. I, I fixed it, but like I that's kind of the level that we're operating at with Paladin, unfortunately. And that's pretty disappointing because I do like the underlying class for Paladin, and I do think it got some good buffs. The ability to maintain that Consecration bonus while moving out of it is huge. It's something people have been begging for for ages. It's unfortunate that Paladin's healing is still really not up to par, and it has basically wound up with two different hero talent specs that are really not all that great. So just to kind of hit all of my notes here, is, is Lightsmith fun? No. Is it strong? I think it's okay. I have had some pulls where due to kind of the weird level scaling while leveling, 
it did insane amounts of damage, but I think that was really more a function of it being put on somebody who was low level while doing some more heroic dungeon stuff and using both of the light smith skills. I never really felt like it was particularly strong. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't unplayable, but it didn't feel great. It definitely didn't feel like I had popped a major cooldown when I used Sacred Weapon or Blessed Bulwark or whatever it's called. Uh, Holy Bulwark. Right, I press a button and I got a little bit of shielding or I press a button and I occasionally get a little bit of extra damage. Didn't really feel like I added all that much damage or defensive value. I guess in the literal sense it does change my playstyle in that it adds an extra keybind that I have to keep track of, an extra cooldown that I have to use, but it doesn't feel particularly strong, so it really just wound up being bar bloat, so I actually think it kind of like Bear Druid, it changed my playstyle for the worse. I would even put it alongside Sand Lane. I really do think it's down in the D tier. I think it's at pretty much the bottom of the barrel for me, and that's really disappointing because I like Paladin, I do want it to be good, I just don't think that Lightsmith has hit the mark really on any front. Now Templar I do feel a little bit more positively about, in terms of it being fun. I think it's fun, I think it's fun enough, I wish that it did more burst damage for the fact that it is a holy power consumer, like it is something that actually takes holy power away from you, it also is tied to an odd Basically a good defensive cooldown in Eye of Tear. Really good defensive cooldown that has then been nerfed a little bit, and now you're also having to use it for offensive purposes. It really doesn't make sense that it's tied to Eye of Tear. I think that it is done pretty much that way because it lined up with being tied to Wake of Ashes, which makes perfect sense for retribution and really does it for protection. Maybe if it were tied to something else that was more analogous like wings or divine toll or something maybe that would make a little bit more sense but then the cooldown would be longer so i'm not exactly sure what the real fix is here but i know that having it tied to eye of tear and then also being a holy power consumer is just a real problem if it did something to help with resource generation like if you got a lot of holy power out of playing templar i think it would be a good spec as it currently exists, it's kind of a mediocre offensive cooldown that also steals defense from you. Like, it is a net defensive loss to play a Templar Paladin. That just isn't going to work for high-level competitive content, and so that's a huge problem. So even though I like it right now for easy stuff, and I think it'll be very fun for easy stuff, I think the ceiling is low, and that means you pretty much only have Lightsmith to lean on, and that doesn't really feel all that strong either, and... That is the problem with Paladin. If I had to nail it down more than anything else, I think the issue with Paladin for me is that I feel like I am playing the base class with, with no hero talents more so than any other class. They got the dud. Twice. I don't think the underlying class for Paladin is bad. I just don't feel like I'm really playing something that is juiced up in the way that a lot of these other classes are. And we've got DK here, Monk here, Druid here, Demon Hunter here, and then Paladin is a significant step below them, even at its most fun. All right, so here we have Warrior, and that's Colossus and Mountain Thane, and I'll go ahead and get to Colossus first, I suppose. I like the idea of Colossus. It was definitely the one that I was more excited for in the run up to the alpha and the beta and then kind of being able to play with them more. Unfortunately, it has a really big liability and that is that it just doesn't help with rage generation at all. And that's a huge issue. So to hit all the notes, is it fun? I do think that the big burst damage combo of it is fun. I would kind of put it in a similar camp as Deathbringer in that it is sort of a big cooldown oriented hero spec. The problem is that it doesn't do anything to help with resource generation and the combo is relatively simple, unlike Deathbringer where there is a bit more, I don't know, stuff to it, substance to it. Colossus has quite a lot less going on in its combo. You press a button, now you have pressed it, and so it kind of just misses on that front. I think that for parsing for big single target damage, raid, parse situations once you have a lot more gear and you're no longer reliant on a mountain thing to generate a bunch of rage for you, I think Colossus could wind up being good. It certainly is the, the hero spec I want to be good, most of all of them, but I don't think it's hit that mark at this point. So, not strong, does make that sense thematically, does change your play style, but not really all that much, and it adds more bar bloat, so we're going with C tier. Not great. And then we have the alternative, and I think it's the one that if there's anything that's competitive with Deathbringer as the number one hero spec among tanks, it's Mountain Thane Warrior. 
I think he's the king of the castle, the 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 top of the tower, whatever you want to say. He is the guy. It generates so much rage. Like I this is a silly comparison to make, but it is the most complete online end game tank for the content that's available that I have ever felt while still farming for upgrades in heroic dungeons. And it's only going to continue to get stronger because it's going to get more haste. It's going to get more crit and versatility. And it's already generating so much more rage than the baseline warrior, than Colossus warrior. It also does tons of AOE damage. It has really, really fun procs that bounce back and forth between each other. There is a lot to track, but there's not any added keybinds. It just basically enhances all the stuff that you would normally do. And it's just really, really fun. It kind of reinforces everything that Warrior does, which is the combination of Shield Slam Whack-A-Mole and then Thunderclap, big, big damage procs in AOE. And that's really exactly what it's doing. It's just doing everything Warrior already does, but more, and then it also looks like a lightning god, which is cool. So I kind of think that wraps things up for me. If I had to kind of nail them down, I do think this is the order I feel that they're all kind of feeling for me. I think Warrior is, Mountain Thane Warrior is the king with Deathbringer DK and Master of Harmony Monk, both pretty competitive, and then Elune's Chosen, Felsguard, also really, really fun. All five of those are incredibly fun. I think all of those tanks have really good stuff going on. And, you know, right now I am playing Monk. I think that is the plan going into the next raid. You know, you never know what they're going to do. You never know what they're going to do with, with balancing. I might wake up tomorrow after, uh, after putting this video out and... They nerf everything except for Warrior, and now Warrior's the guy, or they nerf everything except Paladin, and now Paladin is the guy. You know, you never know. But as things currently stand, I think Monk is the tank that I'm planning to play going into the next season, in no small part because it does have two hero talent specs that I think are both pretty good, above average, whereas every single other one of the classes, I think, has some sort of liability somewhere, but also a really big upside. Monk's kind of the only one with no real downside. Warrior probably has the most upside. Like, if I were only going to focus on Mythic Plus, I do like Warrior, so that'll kind of taint my opinion, but that is the class that I would be playing if I was focusing on Mythic Plus. It's either Warrior or DK, I think, would be the one that, that I would lock in on. All right, I think that covers it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you found this entertaining or uh, enlightening in some way. Bye.